welcome to the inaugural episode of Brandstorm, the show that talks to people behind some of America's great brands. I'm Nancy Christopher, the PR Director at Platypus Advertising and Design, and I'm joined today by Dan Trzinski, the President of Platypus. How are you, Dan? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Nance? Wonderful, and I'm pretty excited to talk a little bit about who we are and why we decided to jump into podcasting with our own show. Well, Nancy, at at our core, Platypus is a communications company. We do a variety of projects from branding to advertising to marketing to design and sometimes PR you, PR that's right we uh, can't forget about that one of no, the most important can't. departments in the company exactly of course. <laughs> so really sometimes we're working on selling a product or a service and sometimes it's just communicating an idea or a feeling during the course of our many episodes to come hopefully We will explore a wide variety of topics, including a wide variety of guests from entrepreneurs to chief marketing officers to thought leaders, innovators, media types, moguls of all sorts. And I think our goal is also to share the insights of our guests and some of our staff members and even ourselves on the aspects of branding and delivering a brand's message. And we hope that as time goes by, you'll reach out to us about topics you'd like to hear about or some guests you'd like to hear from and If that person happens to be you, well, that's fine, too. So today we thought it might be fun to start off with the topic of startups. (laughs) Over my career, I've had the chance to work and meet with a lot of startup brands, and some of them became very successful, and others didn't quite make it off the ground. But a common thread that most of those companies that did succeed had were ones that had the resources to support a good idea. Every startup has its bumps in the road, so having a support network and the capital to see those times through is really key. You know, it really is, and our guest today can provide both the resources and the support, and he's had a pretty successful career as a businessman himself. Uh, Our guest is part of the Schlossman Auto Group, and they are celebrating 50 years in the car business. Its first dealership, Dodge City, opened in 1967, and the company also now has Honda and Subaru dealerships, as well as BMW and Triumph motorcycle dealerships. I've had the pleasure of knowing and working with him for more than 20 years. He's an entrepreneur, a mentor, and now an investor in startup brands across the country. So let's welcome Brad Schlussman. How are you, Brad? Good. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks for having me here today. Brad felt there was a need to help entrepreneurs get their business idea off the ground, and he's making that happen with a startup business of his own, uh, appropriately named Ground Floor Funding. So, Brad, tell us a little bit about your background and what inspired you to start Ground Floor Funding. My father started the uh, Dodge dealership, Dodge City, in 1967, and my brother and I, about 10 years later, got into the business with him and helped uh, grow our company to uh, uh, several more dealerships. We acquired a Honda dealership, a a Subaru, uh, Mitsubishi, another Dodge dealership, as well as um, Triumph and and BMW motorcycles. So we've uh, had a lot of experience here in uh, the Milwaukee area in the market. Uh, We've had some great success due to um, the great employees that we uh, work with. I personally have always enjoyed all aspects of, of business, but my biggest motivation really is seeing people exceed their levels of their own expectations of their abilities. Uh, so often I find employees that have abilities that they don't even know that they have, and they're able to uh, uh, grow those abilities, use those abilities to the best of their advantage. And um, we, we, we take advantage of that because we do promote people from within and we try to create our own uh, managers and our, or create our own uh, salespeople, technicians. So we do have a lot of people that we grow from the inside. One of the things that I truly believe in is the fact that businesses uh, that create jobs really do more than just benefit the economy. They give people an opportunity for earning power and a better life for themselves and for their family. So along those lines, I, about 30 years ago, as well as my brother, started uh, teaching junior achievement. And junior achievement, for those of you that uh, don't know, are, uh, it's a nonprofit organization that uh, tries to bridge the gap between business and uh, education go around the city teaching kids different uh, aspects of business, different things about uh, the economy. And it, it really is very interesting to see what they think at that uh, time in their lives. And these are anywhere from sixth graders all the way up to seniors in high school. 
Uh, one of the favorite classes that I do teach is Excellence Through Ethics. And coming from a car dealer, sometimes people have a little bit of a, <laughs> uh, a smile on their face just like <laughs> sure. that. Right. Uh, but it really is amazing today to me, these young people and, and how they think and what they think. And uh, uh, I try to show them what uh, is the right way or maybe the wrong way to think about ethics and morals. But uh, anyway, so we've been doing I've been doing that for quite a bit of time. And there really are a lot of great ideas out there. And there's a lot of great people that are motivated to uh, tr try to start their own businesses. So, Brad, what do you want to say to those who think they have a really good idea and they want to start their own business? Are there any questions they should be asking themselves? Yes, actually, Nancy, the, first and foremost, the most important thing is that they understand that um, you can try to start a business, you can, and you may fail, but there's no limit on the number of times or number of attempts that you can make to start a business if you do fail. Some of the greatest business people today have failed multiple times before they became a success. So failure is not necessarily um, cut you out of uh, the startup activity or, or a startup business. It's just simply a learning experience. And I encourage everybody that if they do try to do something like this and they fail, try again. It's just that simple. They should ask themselves, why are they doing it? What's their motivation? Is this uh, strictly a uh, economic motivation? Is there a social cause for this? Um, but they should have a purpose and a meaning with their own idea as to what they're trying to do in a, in a, in a startup business. Another question they want to ask is, uh, is, is this a new idea or a better idea? You in, in the startup business, you obviously uh, are working with products or ideas, either new ones or, or simply improved ones. Another, another question that uh, they should be asking is, who is my competition? Who will my competition be if sure. I have a, um, a product or a service? As well as, who is my market? Who is my customer? Uh, who am I going to be appealing to with this product or with this service? Uh, what am I looking for from an investor? And who can help me uh, with an investment? And who can help me with ideas in managing this new startup? And, and there are a lot of uh, good accelerator companies out there uh, besides my, my own ground floor funding. Milwaukee in itself has a lot of different uh, accelerators that are there to help entrepreneurs and help uh, startup companies get going and give them guidance, just as I'm trying to do myself. So that leads me into the question, there are a lot of options. You can get a bank loan. You can do different ways. The angel investment in things, uh, venture capital. You know, what would a startup brand have to do to attract a company like yours to their idea, their product? What are you looking for? We're looking for uh, simply a new product or a new idea, a new service, something that can help, something that's not around or something that that uh, is much better than what the current product or service is. It should be something that has a large volume potential with uh, scalability or multiple locations. It should be a, um, there should be a competitive point of difference. Uh, there should also be, in my opinion, potential for job creation. That's one of the biggest things that I uh, am motivated by is simply to try to create jobs. And uh, again, I think that people with jobs obviously are gonna make a better life for themselves and for their family. But we actually would really look at anything, any type of business. There's not a specific industry or space that we are looking to stay in. We're very flexible, and uh, we're very open to any type of idea that somebody might have. And you're based in Milwaukee, but you would do things in other states, any, actually, anywhere? Actually, yes. We, we actually currently have two investments going on right now, and one is in Miami, Florida, one is in Austin, Texas. Great. What, what kind of businesses um, have attracted you so far? I have had a number of uh, entrepreneurs run ideas past me, anything that, that really that you can think of. But the two um, businesses that I did invest in currently, one is a restaurant delivery service called Mr. Delivery. They're based out of Austin, Texas. That particular uh, space is a very, very competitive, very growing uh, space that... Um, uh, even locally here in Milwaukee, we've had a number of different companies with um, turnover as well. Um, the other company is a cookie company, actually, called Miss Mindelbread, and it's a specialty cookie that um, is, is it's based on the Internet, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's cookie sales. <laughs> wow. How are they doing so far? Uh, Mr. Delivery is doing very well, and Miss Mindelbread is uh, struggling a little bit, but uh, we have, uh, hopefully it will 
turn around here real quickly. I had a, a thought when you were talking earlier. You said um, businesses can fail once or twice or over and over. I mean, you shouldn't let that stop you when you have a great idea. I, did you have any challenges or your family in starting uh, the Schlesman Auto Group? Their uh, legend is told that uh, <laughs> when my father first started out in business in 1967, and I don't know if you recall, 1967, we had uh, um, civil unrest in this country. Yes. And uh, his first dealership was on uh, 27th, the, or 29th and North Avenue. And um, when he first went into business, uh, the civil unrest that took place in Milwaukee uh, was right uh, there, right in his business, right in his eyes uh, going on. So that was a little of a challenge for him. And a year later, uh, he was struggling very, very uh, tough, uh, uh, struggling very hard. And uh, he didn't think he was going to make it, quite frankly. Uh, Chrysler at the time uh, thought that he had the potential and the ability to uh, be successful, so they actually gave him a second chance. And uh, luckily, he learned a lot, and in that second chance, uh, you know, here we are today. So uh, oh, that's a great, going back from the beginning, there was some struggles, as there are with any business. And, and that's why I say, uh, and I've told this to my, my kids their entire life, it's not just business, but any type of struggle that you have. If you fail, that doesn't mean you can't start over and try it again. You can certainly do it. Uh, multiple times. And as I said Learn earlier, from your mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. And there right. are very successful businesses, as we all know today, that, that, that did fail and did struggle. And uh, they're, they've got success stories going on right now. So back to uh, the kind of the uh, what attracts you to think, what are like, what were the documents that are should be must haves that you need to see as a potential investor that you know what? What what are you looking for? I mean, is it income statement, balance sheet? Are you, you well know, sales, or is it just can it just be an idea at a certain point? There are some people that just have an idea and don't necessarily have the business acumen to make up a business plan. But for any type of startup, any type of business, a business plan is critical. You have to have some type of a roadmap to know where you're going. Otherwise, uh, you'll you'll get lost. But uh, a business plan with um, projections for sales, projections for cash flow. It should also include some type of marketing plan. Again, who's the competition? Uh, what are the industry trends? And what are the potentials in that particular industry? Uh, but a basic business plan with projections for sales, with uh, marketing plans is really what I look for. And if um, somebody gets into a startup situation where they are struggling with uh, a business plan or marketing plans, these are the types of things that we can help with. We can help with strategic planning. We can help with uh, uh, marketing. Uh, we can help with organizational skills. And uh, it is uh, interesting because a lot of people, although they have great ideas, they don't just necessarily have the infrastructure or the knowledge of the infrastructure that it would take to, to run this business or get the business off the ground. I think that would be extremely hard. I mean, you have a great idea, but what do I do next? It is. Um, well, what, what they do next is hopefully contact me and hopefully I can help them. <laughs> but as I said, uh, today you can go on the internet and Google startup uh, funding. You can Google startups uh, and you get all kinds of uh, different information and different uh, companies that will help you. Will help you. Uh, again, if you got a good idea and it's a good, uh, it's a product or a service that's something new or something improved, uh, there are a number of different uh, companies like myself that are out there. That are, are there specific verticals, uh, vertical industries that would be appealing to you? Or, I mean, you, you went from, you had cookies and you had food delivery. So there's a food connection there, but it, can it be yes. anything Any, else? Is there, anything. you know, most startups these days have some type of technology related Internet to them, related. Right. Or something on the phone. But then again, there's all kinds of companies that can start today that don't necessarily rely on uh, digital uh, uh, a world. I noticed and, that your uh, website, you said you even looked at a comedy club. <laughs> right, uh, right, <laughs> exactly. And that was no joke. But, <laughs> right. uh, um, we did. And we will look at anything. We really, um, my goal here is honestly to help people get a business off the ground, establish jobs for people, create jobs for people. And um, hopefully, as I said earlier, allow them to have a good income, allow their employees to have a good income so that they can lead a, uh, a good life. Well, you talked about 
a lot of angel investors out there and how people can Google that. How do they get in touch with you? They can call me direct. Uh, my phone is 414-331-1194. Or they can email me at brad, B-R-A-D, at groundfloorfunding.net. Wow. Thank you so much, Brad. There's a, there's a form on your website, too, that they yes, can fill out. Yes, there is they a can, submission you know, form on the website. There's a submission form that and, uh, that you ask go, a couple of questions. Yes. I noticed that that, that would be another way. That'll go that, directly to me, and um, I would respond uh, immediately to any uh, submission that we get. Great. Great. Do you have any last advice or thoughts for uh, people that are wanting to start a, a company and uh, or have an idea that... Uh, you can, maybe, you can bestow. Or maybe even what your dad passed on to you, because obviously he had his struggles and got things rolling despite some of the obstacles he had to face. What did he the, tell you? Well, the biggest thing that we've learned and we try to teach our uh, associates as well is that it really, it's not the car business, it's not the cookie business, it's not the food delivery business, it's the people business. It really is all about the people. And it's about the people that you work with and how you create a customer base. It really is all about people. It's about personal relationships, about connections. And uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if you fail, don't take that as forever. Try it again. Give it another shot. Great. Well, thank you, Brad. Um, It's um, brad at groundfloorfunding.net. And uh, that's also then the website URL, groundfloorfunding.net, if you want to check out the website. And we thank you for being here. And uh, good luck. I hope you find the next millionaire. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. (laughs) Thank you. Bye-bye. And if you like what you've heard today, please don't forget to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. This is Dan Trzinski along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that works with regional, national, and even global brands every day. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm.